Welcome back. In the last couple of videos, we've seen how we can share a folder or share data between a container and um, and our host machine. So we used it for web development, and this is a very good practice, for example, to uh, to do when you have a container that's running something, and you'd like to use maybe, for example, your favorite text editor or favorite IDE to do the to do the uh, development. Then what you can do is you can use the minus V option to map drives uh, or map uh, volumes between the container and your host machine. What you're going to do now in the next video or two is continue along the same line, but what, what we're going to do now is we're going to try and share folders or directories or volumes between containers, right? So we're going to create, we're going to create a volume in one container and then access it from another container. Now, to create a volume in a, in a container, it's not actually very difficult. It's a similar similar uh, option that we used last time. All we need to do is, for example, let's say, uh, let's run that uh, simple Ubuntu image that we had from before. And the way we can do that is say docker run uh, minus it to run interactively. And let's give it a name, minus minus name. Let's name it, let's say alpha, right? Name it alpha and say, Ubuntu, Ubuntu, but what we're going to do now is we're going to say minus V and then maybe create a volume inside one of the directories. Let's say maybe inside the slash var directory slash var slash my um, volume, right? So what going to, what's going to happen here is uh, that Docker will create this directory called my volume inside the slash var directory inside the Ubuntu and it will be accessible from outside. So let's hit enter. What's it saying? Response demo incomplete. Oh, alpha is already there. I have another um, another container named alpha. Let me actually, uh, let's practice docker ps minus a. And I do have alpha, so let's do docker rm alpha and it should be removed. Now nothing is there, so let's run the command again. Look at the command again, please. Docker run minus it minus minus name alpha. We give it a name minus it run interactively, um, and then minus v. Now, as we mentioned, Docker will create this directory called my volume inside var and inside slash var, and it will be a volume that we can access from outside, from maybe for example by another container. Let's hit enter. It will run now. Um, we should have said maybe bash, but we're already um, inside the container now. If I check slash var, I will notice that I will have my volume. So Docker, Docker created that. Uh, it's an empty directory. And what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to um, try and access that volume from another uh, from another container. Let's actually go inside, yeah, just to make sure that we actually can access it and let's create a simple file maybe my file my file dot txt yeah uh, or maybe let's actually write something yeah. so maybe let's say hello world and then uh, oh no I say echo not cat echo that and if I check this file now display the contents it should have hello world now benefits of having volumes not not only that we can access them from other containers uh, and please remember this that if we have these containers uh, with volumes that we can access from outside the one good benefit is for example is we can use them as data containers so if you have data we want it to be separate from other work that we have, then we can use uh, um, volume uh, volumes and we can have a separate data container that contains data. Other issues are, we spoke in the very beginning of this series about uh, this concept of um, copy on write uh, technique or, uh, or, or, or uh, idea that, that Docker uses. And what happens now if we use volumes, we are bypassing that, so we're using the systems read and write which may write method which means writing now becomes much much more faster right so writing now becomes much more faster when we use 
uh, uh, volumes. Um, another issue is that if we change something, for example, in our container now, so when we added this my file uh, .txt file, if we do Docker commit, then it will not be committed to the actual. Uh, if we want to create an image, then it will. This change will not be actually committed, right? Um, and if we have, for example, a run instruction uh, in the Docker file, and that run instruction changes the contents of a volume, then those changes will not also be recorded, just for you to be aware of it. Um, so let's stop here, and in, in the next video, let's try and share that volume from another of, by, another, uh, by another container, right? See you next time.